Hello and welcome to this special discussion jointly hosted by the IDEM and the Rasala update in the context of an important verdict from the Supreme Court, something that has created judicial history. In the Bilkis Banu case, one of the survivors of the 2002 genocide which happened in Gujarat, Bilkis Banu was gang raped, her family members were brutally murdered in front of her. And it all seemed as though she would never get justice. But three people, a politician, Subhashini Ali, the Politburo member of the Communist Party of India Marxist, Revati Lal, a senior journalist, and Professor Rupreka Varma of Lucknow University, they came together and jointly filed a petition which addressed a major issue in this case, which was the remission of people who had been convicted of the gang rape of Bilkis Banu. And now the Supreme Court has struck down that remission order given by the Gujarat High Court. Subhashini, first of all, congratulations and welcome to this program. With me is Rajiv Shankaran, who is the editor in charge of Rasala Update, our co-host of this program. I'll start with you, Subhashini. Of course, we have to start with you. As I say, so, where do you go from here in the Bilkis Banu case? Well, right now, of course, we are going through the judgment, looking at it. And uh, we are planning to meet in a couple of days with the lawyers uh, and try to see if there's anything more that we need to do. They probably are, because there are still so many unaddressed issues. For example, there's the issue of Bilkis's own safety and security and, uh, you know, what compensation she was promised, what has been done about that, the job that her husband was offered, and will she be able, will she be helped by the Gujarat government to live her life in peace with her family? That's a very big question. Now, I don't know how we go about that, but since the Supreme Court has uh, gone into many of these questions, uh, we feel that maybe they should supervise uh, what happens to her, what is how the Gujarat government is going to be behaving with her. That That's one thing. The second thing is, as you know, the uh, judge has said, has appointed that uh, this matter should have been decided by the Maharashtra High Court. And right. it was beyond the jurisdiction of the Gujarat High Court. So now these criminals will possibly... Uh, uh, file an appeal or go to the Maharashtra High Court and they may feel a very emboldened by the fact that now there's a BJP government in Maharashtra also, which wasn't there earlier. But uh, it's not going to be all that simple. First of all, the Maharashtra High Court will have to deal with the fact that its own bench had refused them remission. Right. And their own, uh, CBI bench also and the uh, person who was uh, going into the case, uh, you know, the police officer had also said they should not be given a remission. So I don't know then how that will impact on these people trying to get a remission from the Maharashtra High Court. Also, as you know, there has been a lot of discussion about the fact that the rules of remission earlier were something, later on was something else. So yeah. in Gujarat, they took the plea that when this happened, the earlier rules were enforced. So the newer rules, amended rules don't uh, matter. And that was one of the ways in which they got the remission. But in Maharashtra, apparently, rapists are not entitled to remission. That is okay. what we were told in the course of the arguments there. That is what I have given to understand. So that probably will also be a deterrent. But we don't know. The government has changed. And seeing how uh, committed the BJP government, both at the center and in Gujarat, have been to the release of these, uh, uh, these you know, really, really dreadful criminals who have com committed a crime against humanity, seeing the commitment of these governments to getting them off, uh, you know, safeguarding that remission order, they can do anything, they can go to any extent. Yeah, but no, it's not just for us, you know, uh, we who have been fighting or people in the judicial system, but it's for the people of India at large to raise their voices 
against any further leniency being shown to these people. I think yeah, that's that is, a very important thing. This question about this taking the Maharashtra route is something which is being discussed now in the context of the in in, in a day of a day a couple of days after this verdict. But uh, there is also this reference to a very strong international court of justice, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the precedents, where they have said that gang rape is clearly a crime against humanity and it, it is straight away 30 years. So, there yes, is no... Exactly. Yeah. So, why... But why you know, the government, our government, uh, when, when it wants to, it fawns on foreign governments and wants to get the good opinion of foreign institutions or international institutions. And when it doesn't suit them, then they take the stand that, oh, well, this applies to other people. It doesn't apply to us. So, you know, they. I, I want to just say that the commitment that they have displayed from day one to the protection of these ghastly criminals is something that should be noted by everybody. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, but then uh, do you think that this 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 route, the uh, uh, Maharashtra route, if they are going to take it, how do you propose to kind of uh, uh, tackle it uh, in a, at, the, well, at the legal level? Well, I, I don't know whether they will actually go down that route. Maybe hmm. the BJP itself, the high command or whatever, will feel that it's not going to be very good for them, you know, just before the elections to uh, for this whole thing. Because now there's much more public interest. The whole people are going to be following this case very carefully. When it came up in the Supreme Court, there was some interest generated. And now with this uh, judgment yesterday, there's a tremendous amount of interest. And everybody's asking the same question. What's going to happen in Maharashtra? What will happen in Maharashtra? So it's not going to be only us who are going to be vigilant, but I think a lot of people are going to be very uh, involved in looking at this. What the uh, people who... Uh, you know, think uh, decide strategy for the BJP are going to think about how they should tackle this issue is something to be noted. And of course, if they do go to the Maharashtra High Court, then of course, again, a legal battle will have to be waged. We're not, nobody is going to let them alone this time. Looking at the recent history of judiciary in this country, uh, you know, there is, there, is, there is a kind of mix and bag. I mean, uh, the, the, the verdict uh, on this case uh, by uh, uh, J. Nagar, J. Nagaratna uh, and uh, Justice Bian. So uh, that is a, that's a kind of, you know, uh, uh, it seems to be like a, an exception. The point is, you know, in, in very many cases where, you know, the Supreme Court itself has been uh, adjudicating, we have seen uh, lopsided verdicts coming up, especially in cases like the Ayodhya verdict and also the Article 370 case where the Chief Justice was also involved. So... Uh, what is the hope that we have uh, on the judiciary on, in the context of this verdict? How do you look at the larger picture? I think that uh, two or three things. One is that uh, Justice Nagaratna also was the only dissenting voice in the demonetization judgment, if you remember. She mm. came out very strongly against demonetization. Anyway, mm. she has given a very I think a very well-reasoned, well-argued judgment. She has left nothing to chance. She yeah. has uh, gone into it very deeply. She has yeah. not made any kind of excessive remarks. Yeah. And she has been able to con conclusively and successfully argue that the because the earlier ruling by the same Supreme Court was based on fraudulent information, provided to it by the plaintiff, that is that Radeshyam. Therefore, that judgment itself uh, can be, uh, you know, set aside. Set aside, I don't know what is the legal word, that it can be then... Yeah, because, yeah. Again, it, I, 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 uh, because it was based on fraud, yeah. uh, it should be overlooked. And the law is very clear that since the crime was committed, the crime may have been committed in Gujarat, but since the conviction order was passed by a court in Maharashtra, therefore, it is only in Maharashtra that the remission could have been requested or demanded. So that point she has made very clearly. It's going to be very difficult, I think, for anyone to uh, overrule that. And uh, more than that, I would say 
the public opinion that has been created, that has been so apparent in the last two days, I've not seen anything like this. Even the troll army of the BJP is uh, uh, rather, what should I say, muted. They, they are not able to aggressively, you know, attack the Supreme Court or attack the people who went to the Supreme Court or Bilkis Bano herself. That may come after two or three days. But right now it's muted. And the support for the judgment, the support for Bilkis Banu's courage, the disgust that people are feeling at either themselves having remained silent or those that remained silent or those that garlanded these criminals, that's becoming very apparent. It's all over the place. And I'm seeing it in UP where this sort of thing really matters. And uh, therefore, I think it's not going to be so easy for them to go to Maharashtra and get a judgment in their favor. Let's hope that's true. And otherwise, we'll fight. The fight will go on. Uh, I would like to uh, point out a thing that is a uh, big claims are being made by our Prime Minister on Nari Shakti in these days. A uh, lot of uh, projects have been uh, described as uh, supportive of Nari Shakti. Recent days he came to Kerala and uh, addressed a gathering in Tekinkad Maidanam Trishur and uh, uh, made big claims on Nari Shakti. And I think. Uh, the, this verdict came in a different political climate and uh, uh, what stand central government has taken in Supreme Court and what stand Gujarat government taken in Supreme Court, the, all these things have to be made uh, more, more and more public, I think. You are very right. Uh, there is really not enough information disseminated about what the real policies of the BJP government are how anti-women their policies are. And especially in Kerala, because I think that people in Kerala are very uh, cocooned. They are very protected against many of these things. Not to say that bad things don't happen. Dowry deaths happen, rapes happen. But the government does act. The criminals are apprehended and they are punished. So Kerala women really do not have much experience of what is happening in the rest of India. And therefore, this judgment should be really disseminated widely because the most important thing about this judgment is not that uh, the courts came down in favor of you know justice for Bilkis Banu. No, the most important thing is that the court, the judge, the bench has said that the Gujarat government was complicit with the criminals. Yeah. The Gujarat government was helping the criminals from day one. And they were aided and abetted by the central government. The Home Ministry gave its permission for this uh, remission order to be uh, placed in that committee and passed. Now, this is these are very serious uh, mm -hmm. allegations or very serious comments for a Supreme Court to be making about an elected government, both at the state level and at the central level. And the fact must be known widely that it was exactly when Mr. Modi was talking from the ramparts of the Red Fort on the 15th of August, 22, and promising women in this country that now their honor and their safety would be protected. It was exactly at that time that these criminals were being released from the jail and were being garlanded and welcomed and called Sanskari Brahmins and all the rest of it. So these things must be made known much more widely so that the hypocrisy of this government can also uh, be recognized by them. You are talking it's, about... For example, yeah, they are talking Shakti. about uh, Nari Shakti. And, uh, you know, uh, in Uttar Pradesh, one of the big things that is being touted is that uh, every house has been given a toilet. Now, in Kerala, people are not going to think this is a great thing because, of course, every house in Kerala has a toilet, you know, maybe more than one. But... They think, oh, it's very good that now it's happened in UP. But I want to just remind you that whenever there is a rape case in Uttar Pradesh, it, we are told that the woman or the young girl was going to answer the call of nature outside her house when she was dragged, abducted, raped, etc. Now, if there's a toilet inside the house, why should she be going out? So the reality is something quite different. The claims are something quite different. 
And because these claims are made again and again and again, and because no space is given to the truth in the mainstream media, people believe that the claims are true. And this has to be, these lies have to be punctured. But you are saying, Subhashini, that you know that the public reaction to this judgment, you you consider it positive, you think that people are getting more and more involved. And you said even in UP, where uh, these people were garlanded at one point of time after the remission, uh, that there is so a public... They were garlanded in UP, they were garlanded in Gujarat. I think a couple of them were garlanded in UP also. No, 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 no. We've got other lynchers and all that. The lynchers of uh, that first lynching case in Dadri, they right. were garlanded. They were yeah. garlanded, okay. Yeah, but then you 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 are saying that you know that this is this this atmosphere is slightly changing, and then there is a there is a yeah, public. I mean, I am I am sitting here in Kanpur. People are coming all day to congratulate me, and people are saying this is a wonderful thing that has happened. This was a horrible case. All sorts of people, people whom we would assume are BJP supporters, they are also saying this. So I am not saying there's a huge uh, sea change of opinion, but. It is something that has moved people more than many other things in the recent past. Thinking about the fight that Bilkis Banu had fought in courts in, re, in the uh, past years, uh, and uh, she will be fighting with the an authoritarian or a fascist government uh, that is uh, having power for the last 10 years. And you people are also fighting with uh, that kind of uh, administration. Um, is it that easy to fight with these people? It's much more difficult for Bilkis Bano than it is for us. They have, she has been fighting since 2002. The Gujarat government, BJP government has been there since then. She's a poor woman. She is a woman living in the same village as her rapists and the murderers of her children and her family members. If she could have the courage to fight, then if we don't, we should be ashamed of ourselves is all I can say. She fought them for eight years to get the conviction. After they were convicted, they were regularly given parole. She kept leaving her village, but she didn't give up her fight. And now when we took up the matter of their remission in the Supreme Court, we did it also because on the day of their remission, she was asked by someone how she feels and she said, uh, is this the end of justice? Those were her words. And I think that that uh, gave us all the kind of shock we needed. That what are we doing? How can we let this happen? And then when we went to the court, then she also came through her lawyer and said, when so many people are standing up for me, then I have to also continue the fight. So what I want to tell everybody is, if Bilkis Bano, this poor woman with no support in a village in Gujarat, if she can fight after having seen her family members rape, um, raped and murdered in front of her eyes, after seeing her three-year-old child killed in front of her eyes, after being the victim of gang rape herself, if after all that she can fight, then once again I say, if we don't fight, then we should be ashamed of ourselves. That's all I can say. Well, let us let us uh, let's all hope that the uh, opposition uh, has enough guts in it. Uh, just like you to, to fight the good fight. And also, let's also hope that the judiciary also uh, kind of turns around and it doesn't become a, a, a kind of... Yeah, that, that's why, you know, this has been, this I feel is a sort of a game-changing moment, if you know what I mean. So let's see if the game changes and which way the change is going to be. Subhashini, as you rightly said, uh, uh, this looks like a game-changer. There's all the potential to be a game-changer. But then uh, uh, we know how communal politics works, especially how Hindutva communal politics works in this country and the kind of passions it can whip up. But then you people, I mean, you, Rupreka Varma and Revati Lal, along with the people like Mahua Maitra, uh, we've all been jointly fighting this case in the... In the, in the Don't forget the lawyers. Without the lawyers, we couldn't... Yeah, yeah. Them. yeah. Uh, of course, uh, Shobha Gupta... Uh, so basically, Kapil Sibyl. Kapil Sibyl was the one who initiated our petition. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, along with the lawyers and, uh, uh, of course, uh, the, the the social activists and the but, politicians. Yeah. You have you have you have made a beginning, and let us hope that this beginning is uh, 
is a concrete beginning where it has got uh, repercussions not only in the judiciary but also in the larger social and political space. Thank you very much for giving Thank us you. time. Thank you. Yeah.